Only one angle? Do you need several? I need here, I need here, I need here. <laughs> <laughs> How's my hair look though? It looks great. I don't trust you. I just don't know how like you can hear my mouth. Then don't make mouth noises. I just had that spicy salad. <laughs> Sam just made a salad that would bring kings to their knees. <laughs> It was like 85% vinegar. I told you it was strong three times with before a, you dove in. With a dash of lettuce. Uh, Alyssa, you look so different today. Thank you. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Today, uh, we have a, a guest, and his name's Matt, and he's also my husband. Um, Alyssa's dying of strep throat and back surgery pains, so Matt's subbing in. Um, so today I thought we could uh, answer some questions that people sent in. I already feel like listening to my voice when we were talking the other night about how when I was in grade eight and I tried to sound make my voice sound deeper. Mm -hmm. Sam asked me if I was insecure about my height because I'm five, eight and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and I said no, but growing up I was insecure about my voice because I wanted it to be deeper. So in grade eight I'd be like, hey, <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? And then sometimes I'd slip up and go, oh. <laughs> so I, this is triggering for you. I gave that up. Yeah. How often do I make eye contact with the camera or do we just sit like this the whole time? Well, is it like when you answer, I go like you and then I uh, pretend like I'm someone else is here and then I go like this and then I go back. You don't need to address the camera. But do you guys? Uh, rarely. I'll usually look over to see if it's still recording midway through i wonder if the consumer would feel more <clears throat> at home if i made eye contact with them and then back to you i think that's weirder leave a comment down in the, the comments below okay. and let me know if you think that's weird or not all right okay <clears throat> okay i have questions for you mm -hmm. well for us perfect a lot of people are asking how our relationship has changed or evolved over quarantine how has covid affected our relationship it hasn't done anything yeah this is just another day in the office for us. <laughs> if anything, it's cool because we've been prepared for a plague, pandemic, whatever you call it. We've been prepping for this all our lives. Yes. Um, yeah, Matt and I already live together and work both work from home a lot. So it's pretty normal. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked what affected, change, what affected or changed your relationship more, getting engaged or getting married? Oh, getting married. For you? Yes. Why? Because... We, even when we were engaged, I felt like you could just say, fuck it, and call it off. <laughs> I've seen it in and now I can't. I've seen it in movies. It's a lot more difficult for you to break up with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I feel like it's a lot easier for me to deal with shit. Okay. Um, I feel like for me, it was, our relationship was, I, I saw how it was more affected for, like how our relationship was affected more for you through marriage, um, for sure, which obviously changed the relationship for both of us. But I feel like for me and like my security, getting engaged was more of a change because I think like especially with my career and stuff like that um like people make the comment about YouTube all the time that like it can end tomorrow and like you better have something lined up for yourself and whatever kind of thing um and so I've always felt through my adult life that like nothing is like stable or for sure and so then I feel like when we got engaged that was something where I was like oh, okay this is I feel like I have some kind of sense of direction that feels more like legitimate and it's not you know probably going to end as easily as you said you're yep. both trapped yep oh one person said have you learned anything new about relationships since getting married that surprised you i wouldn't say like since getting married like there was something that i was like oh wow this about relationships but i think just over the course of our relationship in general knowing that maybe we were headed towards being together long term um just probably being willing to like make more compromises or work on things with like a long term in mind whereas like i feel like with a lot of my past relationships because i some part of me knew that we weren't going to like end up together um it was it, like short-term things were more important to me like i wanted to win short-term battles all the time because like i knew that it was like well this probably won't affect me in a year because we probably won't be together in a year that's Nobody. hard to stay present in a relationship if that's all you're thinking about what if you're already planning on getting out, then it's like hard to be like but give shit about the person. I don't think that um, I don't think that I was planning it that way or that I was conscious about it. I think it was just that like I had that feeling like deep down, and it wasn't something that like I let shape the relationship kind of thing. But I think that just like now, I know that like the subconscious feeling of feeling more um, grounded or like tied to the relationship 
long term and I see how that differs from how I used to feel. I wonder if women feel like that um, in more relationships because I feel like women go from relationship to relationship more than guys. What? Yeah. Oh my God, I feel the exact opposite. I feel like I feel like so many women are looking for um, a relationship whereas like even like when we were growing up and stuff like that that was kind of like the the thing is that like guys are just like wanting to like use you for sex and then carry on with their lives yeah but I feel like I don't know after like 22 or something then girls are like oh I don't want to say serial daters but it's easy for them to go meet someone else if you break up with someone Say you're in a like a year long relationship and then you break up. Obviously, you're feeling the pain of it and you're lonely, or most guys go through that process. But I feel like girls are just are it's easier for them to just go meet someone and then kind of deal with that, deal with their feelings with someone else, and then they're already kind of like, well, this is just in between or whatever. Because mm-hmm. I feel like girls can get in relationships a lot easier than guys. So guys, at least in my experience and my friends, we kind of are just stuck like being single for a while trying to figure out what's next and then the having sex with girls thing is really just filling that void for a night because we don't feel like dating this person either but it's just instant kind of gratification and then we're like okay well that was that that'll tie me over for a month or a week or whatever yeah but i feel like girls are just like okay well it's the same thing but they're not just having casual sex with someone they're just like okay well getting back into a relationship yeah i think if anything the thing that i've noticed um is that as women get older, they tend to not be as willing to, um, like, like they won't stay in relationships for as long if they know that, like, they're going to have to, like, sit there and, like, walk this person through, you know, like, dealing with their trauma, like, having to, like, really go through the motions of, like, building a strong relationship because, like, they don't want to have to be, like, the therapist and the mom and the whatever else. Um, and so I think that that's more so what I've noticed over time is like a lot of women not wanting to commit to that long term. Well, that's basically what our relationship has been. What do you mean? Exactly that. What you just said. Me not wanting to commit to it or me doing no, exactly like that? No, like dealing with all the emotions that I had to go through. Yeah. But I remember you said this. If if we started dating now, you probably wouldn't do go through all the shit that we went through before. No. Oh, so that's the same point that you're making. And that, yeah. that kind of stuck out to me too. Yeah, because I think that like when, like because we got together when I was younger, I think I was 23 or 22. I think you were 22. Yeah. Um, because we got together at that time, it was like a little bit different for me because I wasn't, like now I'm 27 and I feel like I I have goals for myself that are very different from where, where I was at at 22. So I feel like if we were to like break up and I was to start dating someone else and it was very clear that there was like a lot of work to do. I don't know that I would be willing to do it just because, you know, like I have other things that I want to do right now. Yeah. And if we broke up, I wouldn't be that person from before either. So (laughs) you kind of put all the legwork in. (laughs) Exactly. People (laughs) bitch about that on Twitter all the time being like, whoever gets him next is like, you're welcome. (laughs) Yeah, no shit. (laughs) Um, But what have you learned about relationships since getting married? Well, I went golf, I went golfing with a couple recently, old couple and she would just bag on him the entire time like joking obviously but sometimes not and then he kind of just like he just went on his merry way like it didn't bother him Mm -hmm. and for me that took that kind of took a thing to me because i do like my mom to my dad a lot your mom isn't that kind of like brash with your dad or blunt or whatever oh my god not at all my mom's like such a like but a softy lot of softy tofty. Yeah, she is. A lot of older couples, I've always noticed, like the woman is kind of like blunt with the guy by then because they're probably just sick of their shit. <laughs> and then for me, I'm obviously more sensitive to like criticism and stuff. But watching that golf day, it just made me realize, like, okay, well, that doesn't bother that guy at all. He seems pretty happy still, so it's not really the end of the world. Do you feel like you um, like base a lot of like how you behave in relationships based off other rela- people's relationships? Or like what you see? No, but I just feel like the pause. I I'm more observant of other relationships now than when I was before. Yeah. M- mostly marriages. Like that's why I like watching Modern Family now because I can relate a lot more to it, <laughs> and it's just more interesting than. To... I'm now a married man, so yeah. I watch Modern Family <laughs> yeah. instead of Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an intellectual. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. I just find it more relatable now. So I always found it funny, but this time I'm I'm enjoying it more because it's it's just relatable to me, and I'm trying to understand different dynamics and relationships. Yeah. See, I am pretty complex, even though you don't think I am. I don't think you're not complex. Quite the opposite. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or not. <laughs> how did you and Matt figure out how to communicate better? That's a loaded question. I feel like we get this question a lot. Yeah. Well, I think it's just a question that a lot of people have for their own relationships as well. For me, for well, Sam had to be patient with me because I was a bit of a train wreck at the beginning. I'm still have my moments. I think their turning point in our relationship was when I started going to therapy. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's good. And then also before I would ask people, I would ask people until I got the answer I wanted for advice. Yeah. Like a relationship advice. I would just keep asking whoever I wanted to until they gave me the answer I wanted. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, so I'm right. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> I'm just bringing up a point for the well, listeners uh, at home. <laughs> um, yeah, I would agree with that. I think that going to counseling was like the biggest thing that helped. And then also, um, I think doing couples counseling, I felt like when I was in couples counseling, it, it didn't feel like we were making like um, progress. Like it didn't ever feel like good kind of thing. Um, but I think that like one big thing that I learned is like identifying patterns and stuff. And I think, I think one thing that was helpful for both of us was understanding, um, like how you react to, um, like your, um, what do you call it? Like defensiveness and like how, when you go into like a state of being defensive, then it's basically like everything is not getting through anymore. Yeah. My brain turns off. Yeah. And I think that that was helpful because, um, something that like I, struggled with was feeling like that just meant that like you just basically inherently didn't care kind of thing because like that would make you become like more cold um so I think like being able to understand maybe why you react the way that you do helped me to sort of take a step back and say like okay I can just like wait for this to like settle a little bit and then we can come back to the discussion yeah the funny thing about that is I would shut down because I felt like I was like disappointing her or letting her down or just basically not being like a good partner or not doing a good job. I always feel like, oh, fuck, I'm doing such a bad job. And then so I start like basically shut down because of all those reasons. But on the external, she thought I was like just not caring anymore and like turning like, oh, I don't give a shit anymore. But it's complete opposite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also with the couples thing, I don't know if people are thinking about doing that with their partner. For me, it was difficult because I already find like like women crying, I get super uncomfortable with. I just never dealt with it because that's just what my childhood looked like. And crying in general, actually. Me crying, my dad crying, no one, no one cried. So that's just like I'm uncomfortable crying in general. And then having another person there made it even more uncomfortable for me Mm -hmm. so if you're crying talking about something and you feel like i'm not like reassuring you're being which i already have a hard time when it's just us having a second person there made it even more difficult for me yeah so i think that's what also a good point that you said before too is like me work continually we only did the couple thing a couple times because it ended up just me talking the whole time so it's like well i'll just keep talking to her privately at least working on my shit there so i don't know what was the question (laughs) (laughs) um how we figured out how to communicate better oh yeah okay uh what are your thoughts on the soulmate concept i think it's baloney (laughs) okay go on (laughs) expand um i just think like there's no way that we're soulmates okay how dare you go on (laughs) because look at our fucking relationship am i supposed to not curse on this program (laughs) when have you ever known me to not curse in any (laughs) setting (laughs) Just look at the beginning of our relationship, how much of a train wreck it was, how much work we had to put into this. I I just can't see that being like, it. when I think of a soulmate, I think it's two people meet, it's perfect, and that they ride in off into the sunset, which I guess is not true either. That never happens for yeah. anyone. So I don't know. I think like, obviously, I, we, felt, we both felt something deep down that like, we we're going to, we were going to make this work and like be together through all that shit so i don't know if you want to call that soulmate but we obviously saw past both that as well so i don't know what you want to call that but i don't think soulmates because but do you believe in soulmates in general no because i feel like you can make any relationship work if you guys want to yeah and you get happiness out of it or whatever so 
I think hanging up on a soulmate thing, especially if you date someone, you feel like they're your soulmate and you break up, then you're just going to be hung up on them for the rest of your life, mm-hmm. which I don't think is healthy. Yeah, I think that you like choose. I, I think you choose who you want your soulmate to be kind of thing, because like I think that's something that um, I, I like. I don't think people are inherently soulmates. I think they build that mm-hmm. um, through their relationship, because like I look at even like my parents, like I would I would call them like soulmates kind of thing. But I don't think they met and were immediately soulmates. But I think that it's just like through deciding to work together and stuff. And I and I think that like you raise a good point with saying that like it's almost like an unhealthy thing to have this idea of soulmates because I think that a lot of people as well um, aren't willing to work through relationships, which I think is fair if, you know, you're like at a point in your life where you're not willing to work through things like we were talking about earlier. Um or you feel like it's beyond working on. But I think that a lot of people have this idea that once they meet the right person, that they won't fight and it won't be hard and it won't be difficult. And they, yeah. it'll just, everything will flow so naturally kind of thing. And I don't think that that's accurate for any relationship, let alone even like friendships or family or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone asked, what is something you both had to compromise on? <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Let me breathe as heavily into the mic as possible. For me, it was basically making myself a priority first you had to com- you had to compromise on not doing that anymore yeah. you mean okay yeah yeah everything i do now i think about like before i guess when we started dating which again was more problems is i didn't really think about like how stuff affected you mm-hmm. so now i have to make sure that i <laughs> now i have to <laughs> now i choose to make sure that i'm mindful of my actions yeah. My words, I'm still having a hard time with because I don't think before I speak a lot of times. So that's just the challenge. That I'm, I'm a work in progress. Yeah. So Not even like a compromise, but maybe just like more so being understanding of um, is how you talk because you don't think before you speak. Um, and because a lot of the times, like when we first started dating, we would get into arguments all the time and I'd be like, stop talking to me like that. Stop saying that like that. And he'd be like, it's just how I talk. And I'd be like, that's how is that just how you talk? And you'd be like, that's how I talk to everybody. And then like, I listened to a few of your phone calls and I was like, oh Jesus Christ, that is just how you talk to everybody. But I think that for me, it was like trying to take your, like w- the the message you were trying to get across at face value rather than like getting um wrapped up in like semantics and like how you were saying it and I I think that that was just something that I had to like be um just be more like understanding on and take you at face value what do you mean oh Jesus Christ (laughs) because you uh yeah you don't think before you speak and you're very brash so like even if you're talking to like a customer and stuff like that like the other day somebody called you like late at night about the ATM thing and you were like just hold on a minute man Jesus <laughs> I was like oh god <laughs> you're like you don't even know if there's money left in the ATM or not hold on yeah. <laughs> I was like oh god because he's getting pissy with me A plus customer service <laughs> yet somehow I have some customers still so <laughs> must be doing something right yeah I'm working on it uh, what's been the hardest and most rewarding parts of therapy the hardest part is talking about your trauma that you don't want to talk about, think about, or feel. Mm-hmm. So that's the hardest part. And the, what's the other question? What's the other side of it? Best part? Most rewarding. Most rewarding. I guess it's just how it translates to our relationship because it's so much better than what it used to be. I agree with both. Well, I don't know that like hardest part is like, because I feel like I'm fine talking about like trauma usually, um, but I think it's harder for me to admit out loud the things that like I think about myself is probably the thing that like I struggle with in like private therapy I guess in couples therapy too here's one that's likely to get you upset perfect uh chores who does what and how did you decide why don't you answer that (laughs) (laughs) Matt has always like had a chip on his shoulder about the chores that he does and the chores that I do not do um we we certainly never had a sit down conversation about it <laughs> about what, who would do what i feel like now i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like now it's more like sort of like whoever gets to it it just does it sort of thing but i don't know if you feel that way he's smirking like he doesn't feel that way at all he thinks that he does more chores is the issue so you don't think that's true 
I here was the conversation that we had about it at some point because first things first when we would argue in the beginning of our relationship I would say to Matt I would be like I feel like you don't care about me blah 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 and he'd be like I took out the garbage or I cleaned the kitchen and I'd be like okay great (laughs) anyways back to the conversation we were having and it always just felt like like I didn't understand why you were bringing that up and then when we moved into the house which obviously the house was bigger than the apartment we were living in. So it's like a lot more to clean and stuff like that. Um, We would get into arguments about chores that I hadn't done or whatever. Matt felt like he was doing all these chores. And I said to him that I was like, I feel like you don't value my contributions the same way that you value your own because you see what you do. What are you smirking about? You know, it's true. (laughs) I'm just thinking about the first time I did laundry without... I picked her stuff out of the laundry so I could do my own laundry because she never did her laundry before. And then she got pissed at me for not including her laundry because I'm like, oh, I've done your laundry a bunch of times. Because right now, we're a family. Right now, I just want to do my own laundry. And that was the only time I've ever done that. So now I throw everything in the wash and do it. But it's so like passive aggressive. It's the same thing as like if I clean the kitchen but left out all of your dishes. <laughs> You'd be like, what the hell is this? Like you couldn't just put my fucking pancake plate away. Is it the same? Yes, it is. Okay, well, now we know. Anyways, and I, we had gotten into an argument about it because I said that I feel like you don't value my contributions the same way that you do your own. And like, just because you have, you know, different priorities doesn't mean that I'm not doing anything around the house. It just means that like, you, you see your priorities as being more valuable. So, you know, while when we first moved in, I think the chores were like a little bit more unbalanced because to you, you were like, you know, cleaning the kitchen and doing the laundry and stuff like that, which are things that like were time consuming and you felt like you were doing the majority of. But to me, it was like, okay, but I'm always the one grocery shopping. I'm always the one cooking and shit like that. And I felt like you didn't like value that because you felt like it didn't take that much time or that it wasn't that hard, I think is what you said at one point. Um, And so then we had argued about this and Matt was like, it's not that hard to cook dinner. I'll cook my own dinner. Oh, you love this story. And then he, (laughs) yes, I do. And then he cooked a dinner of, it was rice, and then he melted cheese. I on tried it. to make a rice bowl. I got from <laughs> from uh, like a gym I went to. They made a good rice bowl with like chicken and cheese. And okay, so anyway, and all this stuff. It was gross. You don't need to get the details. He put the micro. He put the rice and the cheese in the microwave to melt it, and then he put soy sauce and hot sauce on it and ranch and ranch and a couple red peppers. <laughs> And he ate like two bites of it, and then I came into the kitchen later, and there was just like a plate of like gross rice pseudo rice bowl yes but now we grocery shop together we cook together i also tried to get into cooking which i've been doing i still do a lot of grocery shopping on my own though which you do not value i guess i didn't know sorry i didn't realize but that's the issue to me and then sometimes and then so how that kind of progressed was that i tried to start doing more but then matt would not notice when i was doing those things anyways and then so i would get even more upset about that (laughs) because i'm like so you don't even notice when i am doing it And in your mind, I'm still not doing it enough because you just see when you do it, which like just solidified my feeling that like you didn't value what I was like contributing kind of thing. And I feel like you've relaxed about that a lot. But lately, it seems like you're a little bit more. No, I feel like it was pretty good now. (laughs) Okay, perfect. I do notice you doing a lot more. Then why were you smirking about it in the beginning? I was laughing about the laundry story (laughs) the first time it ever happened. (laughs) You're such a stinger. (laughs) Anyway, so we didn't really decide. Now it's just... Yeah, now we don't even notice. Yeah. We just do it. Uh, someone said, Matt, how does it feel to live in, as an adult in the home you lived in as a kid? Well, that's a great question. Is it? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Because I was thinking about that the other day. <clears throat> so, this is what I noticed. Hold on. Well, for those that don't know, so Matt and I bought Matt's old parents' house. My old parents? Well, like your my... parents' old house. Yeah, yeah. That he grew up in. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. This actually used to be my bedroom, this podcast room. Which is so weird. When I was like 12, I moved to this side of the house. Um, anyways, what I've noticed the most, it's kind of chilled out now, but when we first moved in here, I basically, all the shit my parents used to harp on me for, it, it was an inner narrative in my head. So like not getting the floor scratched fucking cleaning up the kitchen all the time the one day i was rolling my suitcase it was like freaking so early in the morning i'm pretty sure and i was like going to get on a flight and i was like rolling my suitcase on the floor and he was like don't roll your suitcase on the floor and i was like pardon me so that was the hard part for me is just kind of getting that weird like narrative 
out of my head. But besides that, we renovated the master bedroom, so it's not like some gross my parents' room anymore. And I feel like this is our home now. Do you? Yeah. I still don't feel that way. I know you don't. I, I, I don't dislike our house. I just feel like it's not... Um, I just... I felt like I missed out on the process of like us deciding to buy a house together and going looking for houses and, you know, finding the one that we wanted and being excited about getting it and stuff like that. Because when like basically um, Matt's parents called him, the whole like Matt's whole family is like so unbelievably impulsive and my family is like the exact opposite of that. So Matt's parents had called him and said that they were, what did they say? My dad called me, said he was selling the house and I said, well, let me buy it. Oh, so it was you that brought it up. Well, he was going to ask me that at the same time. You dirty. Oh, you know that? Yeah, he did. Because <laughs> okay. I was like, that was what I was calling you for. Yeah. Um, so anyways, and then I'm like, well, we don't have 20%. We had like 10% at that time. So then basically he helped me out with the 10% to buy the house, which did him a favor too. Because then, we, and also for us, because we didn't have to pay land transfer tax or realtor fees. But our my whole sales thing to Sam and my back of my mind about it too is the same thing. I guess yeah, it, it doesn't feel like a home really, because this is just an investment in my mind. But that's so. Then Matt got that call while I was out of the house. You called me, and said that you needed to like talk when we got home. Yeah. And I was like, oh god. And then I came home when you were like, so this, and I was like really torn up about it because like I loved the apartment that I was in. And I felt really proud of it and stuff. Um, and I just wasn't ready to do it. We had been dating six months when this happened. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you were so poo head about it. Because, um, like, I was really upset about it. And I felt, I guess, like, pressured into it, basically. Because because your parents are so impulsive and you're so impulsive, it was something that was, like, basically happening. Like, we had to make the decision within, like, how, how long? We had time week two weeks okay a week and two weeks is not time for 99 percent of the population <laughs> well, i don't know That's so like anyway, a lot of time to me <laughs> so anyways we had about a week or two weeks to decide on this so i felt really pressured and i felt like you know nervous about obviously making this like gigantic life decision with somebody that i had barely known and, and our relationship was not like good at that time either like we did not have like a super sound solid relationship um and so I was really nervous about it and really upset about it, um, but ultimately, like, ended up making the decision. Obviously, here we are. We've taken a lot of risks, this relationship. Me or you? Well, I mean, I'm just on for the ride, but you, <laughs> actually. So then when we first moved here, I was kind of upset because I felt like that... I wasn't planning to buy a house anytime soon. I was, again, like, 22 or 23 at that point, maybe. Um, well, no, you said we met when I was 22. Yeah, but then I did the math and that wasn't right. Okay, so I would have been 24 at that time. Yeah. That still doesn't sound right. I think I was 23. I was younger than you by a lot, so I felt nervous about making that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years is like a pretty lengthy amount of time when it comes to buying a house or not buying a house. By a lot. Would you not agree? I bought a house when I was 22. I thought it was... I know, that's not normal, Matt. Okay, anyways, go ahead. <laughs> anyways, so I was young for someone to be buying a house. I was nervous about it. Um... I felt pressured into it and I didn't want to leave my apartment. It was like a whole slew of things. And then when we moved here, the first like year especially was really hard for me. I was like super unhappy and I felt really um, just like isolated basically. And then over time, like I've, I feel like we've settled into the space more and like I, I'm, I am happy with like our space and stuff. Um, but I still feel like it will be so much more exciting when we get the opportunity to like go buy like the house we want and it's like a decision we're making together yeah i think so too so but i do think it was a good investment it was a good move on our part and like it's nice that you have a list down there and we have rental income mm -hmm. and so i mean really it worked out pretty good adult things yeah um someone said what's your favorite memory together I like our Japan trips. I thought the engagement weekend was awesome. Our wedding, obviously, is number one. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> our yeah. wedding was, like, perfect. There's not a single issue. It was great. Besides yeah, our someone, crazy... Yeah, someone asked if there's anything we would have changed about our wedding. No. Yeah. But Oh, actually, one thing. I would have found a different minister of lady. Oh, yeah. She was god-awful. Yeah. That was really bad. Yeah. She, uh, our 
the lady who married us i don't know if she was a minister or not. no they're called something else i don't remember anyways the lady who married us she um we hadn't met her in person and she called us and she was like so matt you're like i'm picturing six feet whatever kind of thing and we were like what the fuck and then she was like sam i'm picturing maybe you know short maybe like one 120 115 and i was like are you talking about my weight like are you asking me are you first of all guessing what my weight is going to be over the phone what is the relevance to this question (laughs) exactly what does this have anything to do with us getting married it was so fucking bizarre i think she asked if i could lift you up (laughs) (laughs) what a fucking weirdo it was so bizarre. Like, it was just the most, like, oh, God. And then yeah. she got the names wrong at yeah, the she ceremony. Yeah, said, she said that my mom was married to Matt's dad. Yeah. <laughs> I had to correct her. But anyways, it was such a quick ceremony, so who cares? If mm-hmm. anything, it's a fun story to tell our kids. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the night was awesome. It was perfect. Did you know about my social media when we started dating? I remember saying that I gave you a follow. You're welcome. But I knew you had a lot of followers. But I don't. Everyone fucking loved that joke. Oh my god! Everyone would say that to me. Oh, so not funny. Okay. No. (laughs) And yeah, so that was it. And then we didn't talk for like two years. What does Matt do as a job? Does he ever feel intimidated that you're basically perfect? Just for you to know, and Mm -hmm. and YouTube famous. Nope. (laughs) I think that's what I think you liked about me. You can speak on your own self. You can speak on your own self. (laughs) Okay. Is that I don't care about social media. Yeah. So it's not like I was ever looking to like use her fame to get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was cool that you like built a business. That's how I always saw it is you built a business up. And so that's what I liked about it. The fact that the celebrity side of it really didn't and it was always be it would i'd almost forget when people would come up and talk to you and say oh hey are you samantha stuff especially at the beginning i would literally forget about it in like a minute Mm. it'd be like oh that's kind of weird and then i'd be like "Eh," and i wouldn't like look at you different or anything so um and it's what's something about do i feel insecure no because i feel pretty secure do you feel intimidated oh no (laughs) <laughs> oh definitely not i'm pretty secure and like happy about my how i like kind of built my career or whatever mm-hmm. so i don't feel intimidated like i'm in your shadows like i don't know how other instagram boyfriends feel but i wouldn't be able to do that so yes i'd feel intimidated if i didn't have my own thing going on mm-hmm. i'd have a very hard time with that i don't think i could do it i would feel like um i wouldn't feel like an equal yeah but that's no diss to Instagram boyfriends. That's if you can make a like a partnership out of it and be happy, then you know that's cool too. My parents had a business together; they did it together. So it's just I need to have my own thing for like my self worth. Yeah. So. And what do you do as a job? Um, I own a trucking company. So we haul wood pellets primarily from the interior, and then we take it to North Vancouver, and then I export it to Korea. Sometimes Japan, sometimes China. And then I also just bought a bunch of ATMs. So I have 35 ATMs. Right before COVID. Yep, two weeks. <laughs> I had it for two weeks and then I got COVID. He didn't get COVID. COVID <laughs> happened to the world. I got COVIDed. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I do. So I spend my time doing both those businesses. Oh, this is like the, probably the most important question that we'll answer mm-hmm. in our lifetime. Who's the funnier one in the relationship? And it's so obvious. You can go ahead and answer. Obviously me, like without a doubt, a hundred percent. And Matt likes to deny it constantly, but I just, you can state your claim. I don't even remember what my claim was. Exactly. Because that that's how shaky it was. I think I would say, what would I used to say? You would say that we're equally funny. Yeah, I think we're equally funny. We're it's diff- so different. inaccurate. Especially when I'm texting. I'm a funny texter. You used to be. <laughs> I, <say it. laughs> I used to be. You used to be sharper and on the ball. Yeah, because I have time to prepare my statement. <laughs> prepare. I was okay, such... but this. Okay, so let's say this. Okay, maybe we're equal level levels of of funny when we're like both trying to be funny through, li- through literature. No, through literature. I think, we're but the I same think funny. I'm like more quick witted, and I think that I'm funnier often, more often than you are. First of all, we're agreeing that through literature we're the same. Funniness. I didn't agree to that. I said my own. I said what I said. What was, what was the beginning part? That we're I, equally I, funny with what? I said that we're equally funny when we're trying to be funny. 
but I'm funnier often and I think that I'm more quick-witted. I don't need to think about my statement. It just flows out of me. I don't know. It's hard to believe, but I'll give it to you. But is it hard to believe? I'm pretty witty too. Oh God. But do you not at the very least agree that I'm funnier more often, therefore someone could say that I'm funnier in the relationship? I think we'd have to do a consensus. Oh, good God. <laughs> you're pretty funny. Yeah, I know I am. You don't even have to say it like that where you're like downplaying it. I'm pretty funny. I don't want to ever admit that you're funnier than me. Why? Because I just feel like, again, puts you above me. We're equals. We're equally funny together. Why but can't we just be equals? Why, why can't we, we just be equals in that area? <laughs> why can't we just be equally why funny? Why can't we just not be equals? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let a woman be on top for once, Matt. And that's not a sexual connotation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at him laughing away. Goodness gracious. I was laughing. I was laughing because I was thinking you caught me thinking about that. Mm. Red handed. Uh, someone said pros and cons for you guys having kids. What's a con? What's a con? What's No, I know what a con <laughs> is. I said, what's the con? I feel like if we're still going to be able to travel, then that's the only thing that really i felt like we could lose that's the only thing that's a con for you but i don't think that's even gonna happen that's the only thing what else would it be i don't know maybe your like exorbitant golf habit is gonna have to change that's fine i'll work around it that's fine i'll work around it <laughs> i don't know how you will work around it i keep telling matt i'm like I don't know. Like, you're going to have to prepare yourself for this because you can't be gone for freaking like eight hours. Golfing. I told you. I, talk, I talked to my friend who had just had a second kid, baby. He's, baby. He's not allowed to golf much, but he finds he's, he, not allowed, to he's allowed to go sometimes. And uh, I'm at my age where I much rather have a kid than golf. Obviously, I love golf, but I'm feeling um, my time is ticking on me. So I'm ready. <laughs> um, someone said, have you guys had partners who are less driven than you? And how did you deal with that? Yeah, all of our partners before were bums. <laughs> <laughs> i got bored with the people i was with and then um that would be the end of it there you go so and i felt like but obviously it was for my own ego where i could just kind of like do what i wanted and no one would they wouldn't pipe up or like speak up for themselves or whatever yeah which is obviously sad and i'm like not proud of it or anything but that's the kind of relationship that i would find myself in before Hmm. but did you not was there ever a point in your relationship in our relationship where you were like oh i can't deal with this like i can't like deal with somebody who's yes <laughs> <laughs> go on many times <laughs> why i remember one time i sat in the parking lot just staring out the window like i don't can i keep doing this i don't know <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> what do you mean why well why like what uh what made you feel like you couldn't do it Oh, I can't remember. Or what was pushing you over the limit. It was near the beginning when we were just arguing about everything. Anyways, go ahead to us your answer. Yeah, I mean, you answered it on my behalf that my partners were less driven as well. I, I think that, like, it's hard, though, to find people that are, like, super driven in the same ways, maybe. Because, like, I think that we're um, driven, but also, like, maybe, like, unrealistic at times. So, sort of. Like, I don't, I don't view our goals as unrealistic, but I know that a lot of other people do. Maybe that's why we're soulmates. <laughs> maybe. Brooch. <laughs> Uh, now Matt's gonna be trying to like pack in. Put the laugh counter. Put the laugh counter up here. <laughs> uh, what is something you are both proud of one another for? Well, recently that emails you sent. That emails. English <laughs> I have. Yeah, I'm a successful entrepreneur. I can barely speak English as a first language. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the email that you sent to those other businesses. That was I'm really proud of you for that. Thanks. First of all, you're doing it by yourself, and secondly, because it actually like ordered really well. Thank you um so he's impressed by my email skills i just knew something that you don't like doing i would say just basically like how you've worked on like yourself and like you within our relationship keep going it's something that i'm proud of elaborate end sentence <laughs> <laughs> um just because i think that like we did have like a really hard time when we first started dating and we and i know that you specifically struggled a lot and there was like at one point you were like I just want to be like alone for the rest of my life. Um, someone said, what was the most effective methods to get through large struggles relationship wise? Effective methods? Yeah. Just try to be mindful and listen. And someone also asked how we work through fights, big or small. I think that, um, yeah, like trying to understand patterns that happen. So for our arguments, a lot of the times the way that they take form is like, I bring something up, Matt gets 
defensive and upset about it and then we argue about other random shit for like an hour and then there will just be like a point where because like I reiterate and reiterate and reiterate my points and then at one point Matt's like yeah that makes sense it's like literally like a switch has flipped like so suddenly like yeah yeah I could see that and you're so like friendly about it and so like like you've been understanding this whole time like you've just been trying to hear me out kind of thing it's like so sudden um and then we usually from there kind of like get to a point where we can be on the same level and understand one another but I think for me it's just like knowing that the pattern is it takes place like that so that if I see Matt going down a a route of like he's getting really defensive and like maybe like I know that this is like not going to go anywhere positive then like sometimes I'll like say that or like call it out or whatever or I'll try and like redirect the conversation um because a lot of the times now I know that like when he's getting defensive and like angry and stuff it's because he feels like he like let me down not because he doesn't care and so I'll try to like be reassuring of him throughout our arguments as well to hopefully like redirect some of that those feelings so that we don't get like caught up in like those like sidebar things and we can kind of just like stick to the main point um but I think also like I feel like just reassurance in general is like a big thing for like any relationship because um if you feel like you don't do right by your partner or like you're never enough for them or that you always let them down and stuff like that then obviously like that's going to affect your like self-esteem long term so I think it's important for people to understand that like problems can happen and it doesn't mean that they're like a shitty partner overall it's just like something that you guys need to work through together yeah and I try to be more mindful of being like reassuring and like not making it about myself Mm -hmm. and what else am I trying to do just like basically every urge I have to do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you were to break up slash divorce, do you think you would still be good friends? Every time I say, what if we broke up? Matt's like, it would be a divorce, not a breakup. Yeah, it's not a breakup. <laughs> would we still be good friends? No. No. Well, why would you want that? Yeah, I feel similarly. I like, I don't like have any desire to be friends with my exes. I think that if we had kids and we got divorced, I would try my best to be like amicable kind of thing. Um, Ugh, that'd be the worst. Yeah, it would not, it would be not fun. But I think that Matt and I like. Yeah, I don't think we would have a friendship outside of our relationship, and that's not to say that like we aren't friends within our relationship. But I think that like we're friends. Like as a result of like the the bounds of our relationship. Does that make yes. sense? Yeah. We're lovers first, friends <laughs> second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> someone said how do you differentiate between healthy arguing and knowing you argue too much for it to be good Ooh, that's a really good question mm-hmm. as long as emotions don't run high i think an argument is when emotions run high i think uh, anything else is just you guys having like a discussion, discussion. Yeah. yeah so and the in terms of like frequency i think that part's irrelevant too because we had so many fights at the beginning it was like almost every day yeah but it, it all worked out if you keep wanting to work at it so yeah I think that like I'm not as hung up on the um like frequency and thinking like oh are we arguing too much where like this isn't a good relationship now but more so like the contents of our arguments because I think that like if you are just arguing and it's the same result day after day after day like I I I try to go into arguments with like a solution in mind like unless I don't have a solution to the problem at which point like I would just say that to you that I don't have a solution but um but I try to go in with like a solution in mind and know that like this is something like this is like our problem not just my problem or not just your problem kind of thing I think that as long as your arguments are productive in that way like you guys know that you're working towards something together like I don't even really see arguments as like a bad thing like obviously like they're not enjoyable in the moment a lot of the times but I don't see them as like overall like an inherently like toxic trait of a relationship I just see them as like a natural response to like issues within your relationship and that's how you hash things out and move forward yeah and I guess if you can move past them like pretty quick after then it's not that bad well and I think that you being able to move past them quicker it is relative to the contents of the argument as well because I think that if you're just having like a hateful angry argument where you guys are calling each other names and saying that you like you're the worst and shit like that then yeah you probably won't move past it quickly but like if you guys are you know being reassuring and having a solution in mind and 
making sure that you're always directing the conversation back to that solution, then I think that, you know, there's no, like, the, with those kinds of arguments, there's no reason to, like, be feeling any type of way after the fact. A lot of people are asking about how you deal with my depression. I just try to be, like, like, with me doing chores and stuff, a lot of times I'll just do it, and if I feel, like, a little bit, like, annoyed about doing it or something, then I'll just think, like, well, she's working all day today. She's doing, like, I'll just think of what your day looks like, and then I'll be like, ah, whatever, it's not a big deal. So, or if you're not feeling good or whatever. So... I don't know. I just try to like be helpful and I'm trying to like the hard part about it as a partner is you like I said I always want to fix it. Yeah. So if you're if you're complaining about something that's a, a related to your depression and I try to give you solutions but you don't want solutions you just want to talk about it. So that's what I've had to work on too. It's kind of just listen and like I don't know. Uh, all I can do is kind of just stand by you and like do the best I can. I have depression too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever asks about me. <laughs> uh, someone said, "How does Matt feel about your best friend?" And then in quotes, and then in like which my calls, Alyssa always being around. I I actually think it's good. When when she was gonna move in before, I thought it was really good for Sam because. We kind of still end up doing our own thing throughout the day. It's just kind of like how we are. So I just thought it would be really good for her to have like someone else around that she can talk to and hang out with and share a bit more interest in and that she's close with, that she trusts. So I think it's good. I don't have... Any qualms? No. Yeah. She's, and Alyssa's good. She's like really respectful and she sticks to herself most of the time too. Oh, and she's going to just tear up listening to this episode. She's all right. <laughs> she's a great tenant <laughs> she pays her rent on time <laughs> uh, yeah no I don't, I don't have a negative thing to say about it uh, someone said is there anything from your past with addiction that you feel like you'll need to teach your kids I think in the back of my mind I was just gonna try to see how their personalities kind of turn out before I can kind of understand like how to approach them yeah because you can pretty much tell someone that's got a more impulsive personality than the other mm -hmm. so it's a different approach i think for the different type of kid but obviously i would tell them i would be honest with them and tell them i had a problem before and <clears throat> all the friends i've had that have died from drugs and i wouldn't really give them a talk like old school parents like wait wait wag your finger at them and say don't do this or just explain to them how it ex affected my life yeah and then they can hopefully make the best decision out of it yeah I would let Matt take the wheel on those conversations, probably. Someone said, coming from someone very single, do you ever struggle keeping the love alive? Who's she talking to? What do you mean? Wait, repeat the question, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's talking to us. Uh, she said, coming from someone very single, do you ever struggle keeping the love alive? Very single. Oh, I understand. Like, she just broke up. Or she's just been single for a long time. Or she feels like she's super single. Not, super not anything single. on the horizon. Anyways, I don't think you need to get hung up on that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. What's the question? Do you ever struggle to keep the love alive? But what does that have to do with being single? Babe, just move past the them <laughs> being single thing, okay? Now, love. What are they talking about, love? You can interpret that however you wish. <laughs> Good Lord. I don't need to keep no love alive. It's, it's, it's bursting from the seams for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're talking about the sex part, I'm super attracted to her still. So. <laughs> I think they're talking about the general, like, like love, spark, like, you know. No, because like, I like... you know how, like, the honeymoon phase wears off? I don't know. I could see people getting bored of, like, the mundane, like, day-to-day -day stuff. But I feel like we do our own thing throughout the day. And we just like chilling. So if we're just... if we're <laughs> We ju just like chilling. <laughs> put that on a t-shirt <laughs> like my favorite time of the day is like nine nine or ten o'clock when we go up to bed and we just sit there and bullshit for a bit and like hang out so it's not like like that is us like doing something for our relationship i guess and i can see other people that just want to go to bed and like that's it and or they want more they want to go on dates and they want to do all that stuff we still go on dates all the time but 
I just feel like that stuff for me kind of keeps us connected. But I, I, you told me recently that you feel like your love language is like dates and personal time or quality time. But do you consider that quality time? Yeah. Okay. Well, then we're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that um, just like just like that like to me I, I guess that I don't need it to be like super exciting or anything like that like I'm not feeling like I'm getting bored or whatever because like I ultimately am at like a place in my life where like I'm looking for like a partner that I can like rely on and that I can feel really comfortable with and stuff like that and like that's um like you are that person for me so I feel like even if like you know like maybe we're not feeling super connected or we're not like the spark isn't there or whatever like because we're having a bad week or something it's like I still feel like com- most comfortable with you and like if I'm having a bad day or whatever um I still feel like really you know like I can be myself around you and that you don't judge me and stuff so I think that that's that to me is like keeping the love alive like that is the love yeah I've never once thought anything different it's, yeah. That thought has never even crossed my mind. But I think for a lot of people, I think that this is the issue is that um, so many relationships are sh- shown in like such a romanticized way where like we do have this idea of like what love should look like and what love should feel like. And it should be so like overwhelming and um, like romantic and showy and like never arguing, never whatever kind of thing. And even if you are arguing, it's like super passionate and it ends in like a like sexual love affair like and I think that people kind of compare their relationships to that at least to some extent and think that that's like what it should be like or feel like because people ask all the time like how did you know that the other person was the one or like how did you know like that you were in love or whatever kind of thing and like we ask that as kids like what it feels like but I think that it's just to me it's like love is like comfort and not not comfort in like that you're um complacent but like like true comfort of feeling like this is somebody that you can like be around and not feel like you have to like constantly have your guard up and stuff like that and like I just don't feel like that's it's it's not something that's like extravagant or showy or anything like that it's just like like it's like a homey feeling I think you made a good point too with um at the beginning of relationships they're like that where like everything's overwhelming and arguments lead to a sexual affair <laughs> <laughs> and uh just the beginning of relationships is like that and i think a lot of people fall into a pattern too where they start looking back i mean i think even i did for a while where you start looking back on like what your relationship was like at the beginning and why is it not like that now but mm-hmm. relation- relationships obviously are going to change and evolve and stuff all right okay Thanks for wow, that was just one final exasperated spot sigh into the. There's going to be a lot of those on this. Yeah, I'm so excited to edit this. I'm a heavy breather. Uh, Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Love you. I love you too. Okay. I'd love to be on again. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Maybe as a third one. This is. We'll see how the editing goes. That's what oh, I put to change my lifestyle then or my my approach to this if that was the case. (laughs) Why? I want to get invited again. Okay. (laughs) I'm trying to be famous. I guess hope Alyssa that gets gets sick then. I can arrange that. No, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>